Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm Will Gerling, sports and performance nutritionist, and today we're talking about multiple transportable carbohydrates and maximal absorption rates of carbohydrates. Ultimately, how much you should be having per hour on your bike ride or your run or your event to get the most out of it. Welcome to another video talking about nutrition and giving you the facts and the research to make the best choices you can for the events and the sport that you're doing. Getting into it, our first bit of information. A lot of stuff is thrown around. Some of you may know this, some of you may not. I think it's important to understand how much we can really have per hour and how much we should be putting in that very drink that we're going to be making so you can get the most out of it and understand why you're having that much. So it's thrown out about a lot. You know, they say two to one ratio and multiple transportable carbohydrates, maybe. You might not have seen that one, that's just me. <laughs> and about glucose and about fructose and about how much you can have per hour. And like, there is some confusion there and that's really normal. Let's break it down and make it really easy. And the best way I can think for us to do that is to imagine within our stomach, that we have something called a transporter and that obviously transports carbohydrate through the gut lining. We're gonna call it a train. So here we have our glucose train and we've got a few people just going in and that's going in nice and easy. But if we start to add in a lot more people and that's going, you know, getting a bit busy now, So if we have a few more people added to that, it gets a bit busy. And that train can only take so many people. And the amount of people it can take is 60. And that's 60 grams per hour. And if you start having more than 60 grams per hour of glucose, you're gonna start getting your uh, platform a little bit crowded. And it's gonna start to get a bit backed up. And then that cube is gonna go, you know, back up the stairs and then back out the front door, which is essentially you being sick. Um, and maybe it won't be that bad, but it's not gonna be great. You're gonna get GI distress, it's all gonna get backed up in your stomach and you're not gonna feel great. Taking that information there, we already know that we can have 60 grams an hour, maximally of glucose. Now that's maltodextrin is glucose, dextrose is glucose, Lucozade, that's glucose as well. And a lot of products also may have other things. Now, you could also be having fruits and real food options, maybe sweets. Now, when you see multiple transportable carbohydrates, or once again, you know, two to one ratio and glucose fructose mix and stuff like this, that's because when we have glucose, which is one train, and then we introduce our new train, for fructose, we can empty out that platform a bit quicker. And fructose has a maximum absorption rate of 30 grams an hour. Now that is a lot slower, it's half as slow as glucose, but it means that we can either go maximally to 60 and 30, which would be 90 grams an hour, or we can still just have 60 or 50 or whatever you're having, but if we had at the right ratios of two to one, then we can get everything off the platform a bit quicker. So if you're only gonna eat 60 grams an hour for your ride, that's maybe like four hours zone two, not too hard, bit of zone three on the hills or something like this, or you're training for a marathon and you've got a two, three hour run, you're gonna be wanting to get that food through your stomach a lot quicker. Now, you don't have to maximize 60 grams of glucose because that would take 60 minutes. But if you did half fructose and half glucose, that'd only take 30 minutes to get through your stomach. So it's a lot more efficient for us to maximize and mix up our carbohydrate sources to make use of multiple trains. Makes sense, right? Now let's take something else like a real food source. So fruits, have a high fructose content. So if you're continually having things like dried fruit, fruit juice, bananas, whilst there is sugar and some glucose in those, 
there is gonna be a lot more fructose and it can be quite easy to get GI distress from high amounts of fructose because it is only 30 grams an hour. So it's worthwhile thinking about that when you're taking all your dates, your figs, your bananas, and maybe if you're putting fruit juice in your bottle. Also, what about our sweets and other options like this? Well, sweets and sugar is something called sucrose, and sucrose is a one-to-one -one ratio of glucose and fructose. So if you had 100 grams of sugar, it would be 50 grams of glucose and 50 grams of fructose. Now there's a great paper out there, and a few of them actually, that have looked at comparing sugar to other carbohydrate sources like maltodextrin, like a glucose fructose mix. And they've had equal amounts of performance from sugar. Now, it's still not gonna be great for your oral hygiene, so it's not great on your teeth but it is a cheap, inexpensive option that enables you to maybe mix it up, like I suggested in my fueling tactics, link in the corner, to try out different food options that will be equally as good. Taking all that information into account, we know now that you can have up to 90 grams an hour with 60 grams from glucose, 30 grams from fructose. We know that sugar is a one-to-one -one ratio and can be used as well as those options because it works just as effectively, though has the detriment on your teeth. And I wouldn't just recommend it generally through your day because it is gonna affect insulin levels. So we are specifically talking about all of this when you're actively riding, running, racing, We've also discussed that having smaller amounts of carbohydrate doesn't mean that we should get it all from glucose or maltodextrin or so on. We can still mix it up, go half on half and maximize emptying that stomach quicker and getting all those people onto the trains and transported through that stomach lining. Interestingly, I'm gonna do another video soon about a paper that did 120 grams an hour and it was super interesting. It's definitely gonna be worth a watch because it had some really interesting effects on the body. So keep your eyes out for that one. It is gonna be good. With the athletes and amateurs that I work with, I divide that up over a ride or a run, knowing how intense it is and how much we need to feed per hour, which will dictate that amount. Females also tend to not need as much because they have higher fat oxidation rates. There also seems to be a relationship with females and finishing times in Ironman distance triathlon and them not needing as much carbohydrate as men, whereas men who had way more carbohydrate had faster finishing times. Today's video was really quick, really concise, giving you that information you need so when we come around to making our own energy drink, you can get the most out of it. And even if you don't, you can always get the most out of the products you currently have so you're not getting GI distress. And now understand all that jargon out there about glucose fructose, about multiple transportable carbohydrates, what a mouthful, and you're getting the most out of your training. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that subscribe button, drop me a like. I look forward to you guys tuning in soon. And remember, fuel for the work required. I'll see you soon, bye.